My name is Clarice von Harper, and I've got a story to tell you. I picked up a job a few weeks ago at a local movie theater, and I can't say it's been the greatest experience. For $8 an hour with free movie tickets and popcorn, I thought I'd be able to deal with it, but uh, I'm just not sure. I started work about three weeks ago, and I met my manager, Trevion. He's very nice, and the best way to describe his appearance would be movie theater Jesus. He has scruffy hair and a long beard. But he's really funny and helpful, so I don't mind working with him alone most nights. I know so far this sounds like a fairly ideal job, but it gets intense. On Thursday, I was here with Trevion, and he asked me to clean out theater number four a while after the movie ended, just so it would be good for the next showing. It's not the most fun to sweep the aisles in a dimly lit theater room, but there is an upside. Any money you find on the floor is yours to keep. So far, I've really only found coins, but Travion said that one time he found a 20. So far, I've really only found coins, but Travion said one time he found a 20. On my first night, he told me, as long as it's not still in a wallet, it's yours to keep. So I don't mind sweeping out the theaters. Even a solid 50 cents is a nice tip when you only make $8 an hour. So I went into theater four between showings, and as soon as I walked in, something was off. I had sold all of the tickets for our 4.30 showing, and I watched all five of the viewers leave when the credits started rolling. But as soon as I walked in, the feeling that someone was still in there was overwhelming. I was right. In the third row from the bottom, I could see the back of a head and shoulders with a hoodie on. Mind you, at this point the lights in the theater were all the way up, which doesn't illuminate the rows much, but it's very obvious that the movie was over. Of course, if the blank screen wasn't your first clue. I thought maybe the person was sleeping, so to be polite and not startle them, I said, Excuse me. Not too loud, but loud enough that the average Joe Schmo would hear me from the top of the steps. The figure didn't so much as flinch. So again, Excuse me. A little louder, hoping to stir them awake. Still no movement. At this point, I started to get weary of the situation. If they were asleep, they should have woken up at this point. Maybe this person had done drugs before coming to see it. Maybe they're just out of it. Or maybe they overdosed? What would I even do if that was the case? So I walked down the stairs, one at a time, slowly, and after every few steps, I'd call out. Pardon me! Step, step, step. Excuse me! Step, step, step. Do you need help? And so on until I reached the row with the figure. From the side, their face was shielded by the shadow of the hood, still unmoving. What I should have done was go out to the lobby and get my manager. In the event that this person was in some sort of medical emergency, I would have had to gone and gotten him for help anyway. But I didn't. I stepped onto the aisle, the dimly lit row only getting darker the closer I got to the middle of the row. I stopped with a seat's worth of space between myself and the person. Sir, the movie ended a few minutes ago. Are you waiting for someone? No answer. Do you need help? Do you need me to call the police or something? I could get my manager or something. Not an answer, but movement. I have to admit, it startled me at first. I didn't know if this person was ever going to move. It was very sudden. The figure stood up. It was tall. Taller than any person I'd ever seen. Tall and skinny and shadowed by the hood and the dim lighting in the room. It stood unmoving, not speaking, facing straight ahead, right at the blank screen. I couldn't see its eyes, but I imagine it wasn't blinking as it stared at the screen. Sir? I was terrified. I felt so uncomfortable, and I was fixing to turn around and leave. Something was so, so, so very wrong here. Just as I started to take a step back, that thing was right in front of me. I swear I didn't even see it move. It was looking down at me, and from my angle, I, I could see its face, just barely. Its face was thin, sickly thin, like its skin was stretched so tightly over its cheekbones that I couldn't believe it wasn't splitting open. The skin looked ashen, pale, and dead. Its eyes were dark and unnaturally large. Normal people's eyes are more oval-like, but these were 
perfect circles. And as far as I could tell, they didn't have any eyelids. And its mouth was the most frightening. The lips were sloppily sewn back, exposing its many sharp and crooked teeth. It looked like some sick, screwed up smile. I could feel my heartbeat, but it was incredibly slow. Not at all what it should have been in this situation. It should have been beating out of my chest, palpitating something. But instead it was resting. Smooth. Consistent. Instead of moving quickly again, it slowly started to lean down, bringing its face almost even to mine. It stopped once its nose was resting on mine. As it moved, I could hear its bones creaking. And the smell... It was gut-wrenching. It smelled like rot death, decay, it was foul, and it was coming from its mouth. That mocking smile, distributing the smell of pure evil. But still, as much as I felt like being sick, I never gagged. I just stood there, smelling its rotten breath. It was so strange. I felt sick in my head, but my body stayed calm. It was almost as if I was in a trance, lulled into a somber state by its presence. We stood like this for minutes. Minutes that felt like hours. Our faces pressed close, the smell of its breath in the air around us, bodies unmoving. Not a word spoken between us. I honestly didn't know if I could still talk. But I didn't even feel like trying. Even though there were no words spoken, there was conversation being had. In the air around us. In the way its round, unblinking eyes stared into mine. In the steady beat of my own heart. The trance was broken by Travion. Noticing my longer absence, he came in to investigate. From the doorway, I heard him say, Clarice, is everything okay in there? And suddenly, it was gone. In front of me was nothing. And beyond that, the great carpeted wall of the theater room. Travion stepped into the theater, looking at me as I turned to look at him. Well? I, I snapped back into reality, perplexed by what had happened in those previous moments. Yeah, yeah, I'm okay. There was just a lot of spilled popcorn in this one. You know how people get. Since they don't have to clean it up, they don't have to mind making the mess. The answer seemed to satisfy him. Okay, well hurry it up. The next set of showings is in a few minutes and I'm going to need you at the concessions counter while I'm in the box office. I got off around 11. Trayvon said he'd do the last bit of cleaning when the movies let out, and I wasn't going to pass up an offer to go home. The air outside was cold and still, somehow stiller than the air inside the lobby. The trees were still, the parking lot was silent, and the only light was from the moon, waxing crescent, I believe, and a flickering incandescent light on a lamppost. The only sound was the beat of my shoes on the pavement. When I got to my car, what I saw shocked me. Sitting on the hood was a beat-up looking VHS tape with a little tape label on the front. It read, see what I see, be who I am, show them all. I didn't know what that meant and it would have been in my best interest to take it in and show Trayvon or call the cops. After everything that had happened, I should have been more suspicious. But instead, I just picked it up and got in my car. When I got home, I raced up to my room and popped the tape in my VCR. First static, and then the video began. It's been four days since I watched the tape. Something is wrong with me. I need help. And that's why I'm sharing this with you. Every day, I lose weight. An excessive amount. I'm talking 12 pounds a day or more. My face is drawn taut, and I look sickly. My arms are thin. I feel like I'm wasting away. My eyes are slowly getting wider, more circular. And I feel like I hardly ever blink. My dreams are haunted by horrifying images, and when I'm awake, I see them behind my eyes. I need to show the world what I saw. Spread the message. Let them become what I am. 
what it was. Tonight, I'm off work. I think I'm gonna go see a movie. Giggles here. Just wanted to say thank you to all of my incredible patrons for supporting me. Tam B, Jen Miser, Skymara Ravenswood, Melissa Perez, Bernard Jackson, Leaf Ninja, Roy Larmer, Mr. Creepypasta, Neon Scoundrel, and William Dolphin. I'm still figuring out rewards for Patreon, but if you would still like to support, click the link in the description and I will hopefully have something for you guys soon. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you all in the next video.